So you're probably wondering what a dichotomous key is and why your professor is asking you to make one. So generally, students are asked to make a key to help them identify an unknown organism. If you design your key correctly, it's going to consist of a series of questions. Each of these questions will basically have a yes or no answer to them. Thus, there's only two possible answers for each question. Generally, you'll start with the question at the top of your key and you'll work your way downwards. Your answer to the first question will then lead you to the next question that will also have a possible, possible two answers, and so on and so forth. And at the end, your answers will lead you, to, lead you to the identity of your unknown organism. Okay, so if you're in a microbiology class and your professor is asking you to make a dichotomous key based on different bacteria, chances are your professor will hand you a table that looks similar to this one here. Instead of listing the organisms on the left, I've just substituted the names with, uh, with letters A through L. Your table will actually have real bacterial genus and species names, but this is just to keep it simple for the moment. I'll come back with bacterial names in a minute. Now notice that this table will list the Graham's reaction, meaning positive or negative, as well as the shape of the organism. The tables also list various biochemical tests. So that's what it says by methyl red, gelatin, urease, etc., all the way to starch. Now a plus or a po is a positive result. In this case, it's very similar to a yes answer in the previous ex exercise. A minus represents a negative result, and it's the same as no for an answer. Now for this purpose, you don't actually need to know what a plus positive or a minus negative means in order to set up your key. But at one point, in order for you to solve your unknown organism, you should know what the test reaction is actually measuring. So I tell my students to start with the Gram reaction, meaning ask a question related to the bacteria's Gram positive or Gram negative cell wall. And then I follow this question up with the shape of the bacteria. The reason being is that you'll most likely need to perform a gram stain on your unknown bacteria, and this will give you the gram reaction and shape in one shot. Okay, so let's begin separating 12 bacteria, listed here as A through L, based on their gram reaction. I'm going to ask the question, is my bacteria a gram positive? Yes or no? Now notice I could also ask, is it gram negative? And I get the same result. So just by asking this question, I've separated the 12 bacteria into two smaller groups of six gram positive bacteria and six gram negative bacteria. Next, I can ask the question about shape. And by the way, you can ask the same question with both groups as long as it helps separate the members within that group. So in this case, I've asked, is my bacterial unknown a caucus? Yes or no? This will further separate the bacteria into four smaller groups, as shown here. You want to continue separating each organism until you get 12 individual bacteria on the, in their own group. So to do this, choose one group at a time until you reach the very end. So in this case, I'm going to start with groups a, C, and F. Okay, you're going to have to go back and forth between the key that you're making and the table that your professor gave you. So if you look at this table, you'll notice that you already grouped your bacteria based on their gram reaction and their shape. So we're going to just disregard this column for the moment because we, we, it doesn't help us anymore. Next, you can also disregard any column where all the biochemical test reactions are either plus or all minus for A, C, and F. Since these te tests won't help you separate A from C or from F. So I'm going to just disregard these. I put a little red X next to the positive and the minus. So based on this table, there's only three possible questions that we can ask to help us separate bacteria A from bacteria C and from bacteria F. So I can ask the question, is the gelatin test result positive? Or I can also say, 
is the gelatin test negative? Either one. That's one question. Another question, is the arabinose test positive? Or again, is it negative? Last one is, is the starch test result positive or negative? In either case, I'm going to separate one of the three microorganisms, one of the three bacteria from the other two. So for this example, I'm going to ask the question, is the gelatin test positive, yes or no? Now I've reached the end with bacteria F since it's all by itself. So I need to ask a second question to separate bacteria C from bacteria A. Now what I also tell my students is that once they've reached the end with a particular organism, just block it out of your view. Cross it out or, or just put a straight line through it. Anything so that you don't have to, to look at that, uh, that area of the table anymore. So I blocked off bacteria F. It's going to help me only focus on the test results that I'm looking for when I'm looking between A and C. So in this case, the only test that will distinguish A from C is the arabinose test. So I'm going to ask the question, is the arabinose test result positive? Yes or no? So in this case, I've completely separated bacteria C from bacteria A, and now I can also block these off. So I don't have to look at these or get confused with my tests. I know that I've separated these three bacteria from the other nine organisms. So I'm going to move on now to the next group. That's bacteria B, D, and E. Again, notice that I can ask the same questions more than once, only if it helps separate the bacteria within the group that I'm working on. In this case, B, D, and E. So I've asked the question, is the arabinose test result positive? Yes for D and no for B and E. I was also able to ask the question, is the gelatin test result positive? That separated B from E. So it took two questions to separate B, D, and E from each other, but now I've reached the end and I've, I can cross those off from my chart also. So we're left with organisms G through L. Ultimately, if you continue step by step like I've showed you, you'll have 12 individual bacteria in their own groups. Now up until now, I've referred to the bacteria by letters, A through L, but I'm going to give them real bacterial names now, because now we're going to use this key to help us solve an unknown bacteria. So like the animal-based dichotomous key at the beginning, you're going to start at the top of the, of the key and ask the first question. Now your professor has given you a bacterial unknown and he's asked you to identify it. So the first question is, is my unknown bacteria gram positive? Yes or no? So of course, as soon as you got your unknown bacteria, you did a gram stain and it indicated that your unknown organism is gram negative. So the answer to this question is no. It's not gram positive. This leads you to the next question. Is your unknown bacteria a caucus? And again, you went back to your gram stain and you saw that yes, it indeed was a caucus. So this leads you to the test result, the test reaction of urease. So you're going to have to go back and take your unknown and perform a urease test. You're going to incubate the test reaction for about 16 hours. And when you come back, you're going to find that your urease test was a positive result. So thus, the answer to your question is yes, the urease test is positive. And now you've, you've actually successfully identified your unknown bacteria. You've identified it as being a Neisseria meningitidis. And that's all there is to it. So I hope you found this helpful, and good luck in your class.